Hi guys, it's Ilya Red here, and today we're talking about tier 5 light tanks. Yesterday I had a nice stream about 3 light tanks of tier 5. M24 Chaffee, AMX CLC and VK1602 Leopard. You might say, hey, how about their British counterpart Crusader? Well, that tank is only called a light tank, but it's more like a medium, it even gets bounced to tier 5, 6 and 7 battles. Our competition was only for scouts. So, overall, I played 10 battles on each of our contestants, everything was live and I was writing down some info about battles. For each tank and for each battle I wrote down the tier of the battle, the map of the battle, if it was a victory or a defeat, and a total, which is dot plus assisted, damage. I have collected this data in order to prevent wargaming based bias, to make sure all light tanks were balanced fairly, which didn't really work but we'll talk about that later. I didn't include the number of light tanks per battle, although it's also important, but it would a. overload us with information, b. it also depends what exactly light tanks are in our and enemy team, and c. we still want to know who's best on the long term no matter who we play with and against. So let's go over stats which I found important to note. First of all, win rate. Win rate on all light tanks was at least 70%, I guess it was a lucky day also. The total win rate of the stream was 83%, with a WN8 of roughly 3800. Please take into account that the WN8 is given only for your own dealt damage. You don't get any WN8 for assisted damage, which is the greatest part of total damage on any light tank most of the time. So if you spot for 5000 damage on Malinovka but don't deal any damage yourself, then in terms of WN8 it's a total failure, but you know still that it was a nice battle. So WN8 is not really that representative for light tanks. Secondly, I decided to exclude two weakest in terms of total damage battles for each tank, because we don't want to include into our analysis battles where I did something stupid and died on the first or second minute for no reason. We really want to test these LTs as scouts. Next, I calculated average tier of top 8 battles for each tank. It's important because in tier 6 battles teams don't have too many hit points, meaning that you can't spot for much damage, and tier 8 battle means that we can sometimes meet tier 7 light tanks, which are totally superior comparing to us in terms of view range, hit points, armament, in terms of everything, and any encounter of tier 7 light tank on tier 5 light tank can be fatal. Also, higher tier light tanks in our team can intercept some spotting damage, and I'm not even talking about dealing damage in higher tier battles. So the best battle for tier 5 light tank is a tier 7 battle, where enemies already have plenty of hit points, but there are no completely superior to us light tanks. As we can see, Chaffee got a bit unlucky there, as it had to fight against tier 8 tanks a lot, whereas AMX ELC had to fight against tier 6 tanks most of the time which has limited its spotting damage potential a lot. Among best 8 battles, Leopard got equally often into tier 6 and tier 8 battles, and there are no tier 7 battles in top 8, which made its average a tier 7. However, as you can see from the table, Leopard was rather effective even in tier 8 battles, but we'll talk about that in greater detail further. Next, I counted the number of comfortable maps for the light tanks, which each light tank got to play on. Of course, this point is kinda subjective, but it was me playing light tanks and me saying what maps are better for light tanks to give stable nice results sounds logical. So as for comfortable maps, Chaffee got to play on Swamp, Searing Coast and Murovanka, three in total. Ilse got a bit luckier and played on Live Oaks, Westfield, Sand River, Murovanka and El Haluf, even though the last one has a questionable potential for a light tank. That makes it 5 comfortable light tank maps for MX ELC. Leopard found itself on Redshire, Fiery Salient, Prokhorovka and Siegfried Line, another a bit questionable in terms of comfort for a light tank map, but is generally ok, so the total is 4. Now if you still question how well I was playing these tanks, we can see the gun mark change over these 10 battles for each tank. Now that I was including only top 8 battles in the analysis, whereas gun marks were affected by all 10 battles, even 2 worst battles of the day on each tank, where I just stupidly died. 
Overall, I got my Chaffee Gunmark boosted from 91 to 92 percent, meaning that top 8 battles were on average clearly 3 Gunmark battles. On AMX CLC, I had a Gunmark of just above 95 percent, and after these 10 battles, it remained where it was. So top 8 battles are definitely on average 3 Gunmark battles. And I've never ever played on Leopard before in my life. But within only 10 battles I got its gun mark from 0 to just over 50%. Taking into account the final result on this tank, I can be 200% sure that I was showing 3 gun mark battles on this tank as well, so no personal bias involved here. Finally, let's talk about the most important criteria and discuss the reasons of what we see there. The last place with an, on average 1626 total damage goes for Chaffee. The silver medal of this competition goes to AMX ELC and it's 1744 total damage. And an absolute winner and the champion of tier 5 light tank contest, total surprise for me, to be honest, with clear and monstrous advantage over second place is Leopard with amazing 2244 average dealt plus assisted damage per battle. Congratulations to Leopard and all its fans! In my opinion, Leopard was a total underdog in the competition and I have to say, I have really underestimated it. However, I have to note that Wargaming randomness was totally against Chaffee and ALC that day, as Chaffee had to play against higher tier tanks often and didn't really get into comfortable maps. Despite that, it showed decent results on the city and corridor maps, just have a look at my Tundra results. Chaffee's DPM allows you to feel more comfortable on these kind of maps and it has rather useful premium ammo. Unfortunately, Chaffee really lacked open maps to fully use its large view range. ELC got too often into tier 6 battles, where teams have roughly 8000 hit points in total, so it's hard to show some amazing result there. Also, ELC sometimes has problems with tier 8 battles, as Despite its amazing camo, it's extremely hard to play against your 7 light tanks due to lack of view range. Leopard was lucky enough to get sometimes into comfortable maps, and its great balance between base view range of 380, which allows Leopard to feel totally confident against tier 6 light tanks, and sometimes even against tier 7 light tanks, and camo, that's better than Chaffee's but worse than ELC's allow this tank to spot very effectively even despite a whole range of drawbacks such as huge size, uncomfortable gun, which is useful mainly against light tanks, paper TDs and RT, and limited top speed of only 60 km an hour. So let's make a conclusion. All tier 5 light tanks are decent vehicles with none of them being absolutely superior to the others. Personally, I was expecting Leopard to be the weakest of them, but I was really wrong about it. I have really enjoyed playing each of them. For novice, I would recommend Chaffee to learn to play light tanks and scout actively and passively due to its amazing view range and its similarity to further tanks, T37 and M41 Bulldog, so you won't need uh, to learn anything new while grinding this line, and you'll have a chance to master main aspects of scouting. On the other hand, when playing Chaffee, be ready to use some premium ammo in certain situations. AMX ELC is also good for novice to have fun, scout sometimes, mostly passively and sometimes actively, and play as a TD. If you play it as a TD, you can boost your WN8 a lot. Also, ELC doesn't need to fire premium rounds and it makes credits really well, as it doesn't fire too often. However, playing really effectively on ELC and giving stable good results is harder than on the R light tanks because of its lower view range. Leopard is also demanding to hands because it's large, kinda slowish and its gun is hard to use. But it's a perfectly balanced light tank as well. You don't need to fire premium rounds on Leopard because the penetration of premium rounds is not much greater than, of, than that of the standard rounds. To be effective on Leopard you need to know weaker spots of the enemy armor well as well as think strategically more, as you s your speed and size don't allow you to do crazy stuff like ALC or to switch flags with the speed of lights like Chaffee. If you found this video interesting, please like it to help me promote it, it shows up in other people's suggested videos a bit more often than share it with your friends, please, and subscribe to my channel not to miss anything interesting. 
Check out my channel art to see when the next stream will be. Play the light tanks, like the light tanks, and see you in bushes.